Bill, what is up, uh, man? <laughs> no, not, not much, mate. Not much. How are you, how are you doing? You all right? I, I'm doing good. Don't worry. I'm not going to go into uh, serenading you again with a Bill. <laughs> I won't. I'm going to cut that part out. It won't You're exist. Cut that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut it. Um, but yeah, Bill, man, how are you doing? It is... Uh, after a great week of Wrexham and Wales, mm. you had that beautiful comeback from Wrexham on Saturday. Then you had a freaking basketball score, uh, Wrexham women's game, um, and then Wales. Yeah, well, w- one of the one of the best Wales games that I think I've seen in a, in a in a very long time, and there's, there's been some good ones over the last sort of ten years. So. Yeah, very pleased. Very good weekend. Really, really good weekend. <laughs> are are you coming back down to earth after being in the clouds for what three days straight? It's uh, it's, it's 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 kind of a weird one because that that game on Saturday, winning in such a dramatic fashion, I, I don't want to get used to that, and I think people are slowly getting used to it. And I think we everyone's got to remind themselves that even good sides don't win always win in that fashion do you know what i mean that's like yeah you know like everyone's got to savor it especially you know, with with the greatest respect especially international fans who might not be huge into sports who've gotten into sports through Wrexham. like th- just just remember this is not normal like just don't be yeah. surprised when you know if we get to league one and then when we're two nil down we stay two nil down and we don't we don't win three two so yeah it's just yeah. got to sit Save the games like that for, for when they happen, and then I don't think I ever, ever. I don't think I really came down after that. To be honest, it was you kind of expecting to to hit the ground, but we didn't. Happy days. <laughs> yeah, the, how insane! How insane! I and to speak to what you were talking about with in respect to Wrexham, you can't just outscore every team and hope that that's going to be enough. Like there, there has to be you know some more solid uh, performances. I mean, I'll take it all day. Uh, but you can't guarantee that like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're down two at the half, you're going to come back and put three on them. Like that, that doesn't happen every game. I mean, every game Mm. Wrexham doesn't score three in the second half. So you, you just can't count on it. And if, if that's how we're playing and it appears to be, that's how uh, Knotts is playing where we're both have the same amount of goals scored against us at being 25, uh, we, that's not sustainable, but I'm ready to be wrong. I'm ready to go to the end of the season and it's us and Knots fighting each other and we both have the most goals scored but the least uh, or and the most goals scored against us. Hey, hey mate, as as long as the the balance is is a is it you know the goal difference is a plus at the end of the season right. and the point right. backed up doesn't really matter does it? Like I'm I'm quite happy to have this entertaining football. It's making my season ticket worth every penny mate. <laughs> <laughs> we do you know what? We we weren't even that good on Saturday for like I'd say about 70, 75 minutes of the mm-hmm. game. I wouldn't say we were bad, but I just didn't, you, you know, we just weren't great. And then I kept looking at the clock and you just you just think, well, there's only 15 minutes left. Like it's not, it's probably not going to happen today. You know, and Davis banged one and then Fletcher bangs one in. And you think, usually I would think, oh, like this is it. We're going to go on and win. But I was like, nah, I'm happy with a draw. That's, that's fine. Like at least we're coming away with a point. And then before you've even had time to catch your breath, Davis goes and scores. And it was just, yeah. Oh mate, like but last minute winners, they are it's it's the best feeling in all of sport, I think. That's that's why football can't be top for me, because you did, just a lot of other sports, you don't get that so the, the drama of it. You know, like even like say like rugby or, or NFL, like of course, like the way they're set up, you can have a last minute punt or mm-hmm. basketball, you could score a, a three pointer when the clock's rolling, mm-hmm. but those games the they're so high point scoring that I kind of feel like maybe it's just because I'm coming from like a, a background of having always watched football, but I come be kind of numb to it until the last five, 10 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Because like, yeah, basketball's like, I don't know, 105 to 104 and yeah, it might yeah. be a tense finish, but they've just been bang, bang, bang. You know, the, 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 the points are just being scored every couple of seconds. But whereas in football, like you, you're waiting, up, you could be waiting a whole game, can't you? Until one goal from either side goes in and it's just that sort of like that release, that tension is, yeah, there's nothing like it, mate. Nothing like it. Yeah. Well, I went insane one year watching basketball when I think it was uh, Kawhi Leonard with the Clippers. I think they were playing. Uh, no, they weren't playing the Lakers. I forgot who they were playing, but uh, they were playing in the playoffs. And it is the final game because they do a series, you know, best of seven. So you have to win four games. Mm. And it is the like three, three wins. So they're tied. And whoever wins this game, it's the seventh game, game seven. And whoever wins the game 
moves on. And Kawhi Leonard hits a three at the final like second, but he throws it up. He's falling out of bounds and he shoots it up and he leaves his hand up and he's just like watching it with his foot kind of kicked up in the air out of bounds because he was all the way to the back corner away from the rim. And the ball goes up. Time's run out now. It hits the rim and then it bounces up again and then hits the rim and bounces up again. And you're like, (laughs) what is going on? And he's just like, everybody's just stopped. The whole stadium is just stopped. People aren't cheering. They're just like, what? Because that is the game. They were behind. If he doesn't make that, the other team wins and they move on. And then after the, I think it was two bounces, it falls in and the crowd just goes bananas and insane. And I was watching that game and I'm like, what did I just watch? That is insane. That's, that is crazy. And and so, but that, you, can, you can definitely get it in other sports. I mean, the, the only other, it's it's like the, the, the closest, like say, that's the same combat sport is you know when you've got um, a fighter that's getting pasted for three or four rounds or you know if it's boxing a bit longer than that and then they just pull out a last minute knockout in one of the last you know like to, to come from behind that, that's 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 there's, there's loads of things in sports in there but I just think there's something about the tension in football isn't there it's like that yeah. 90 minutes of pure pain <laughs> is sometimes not all the time but sometimes felt like that on Saturday as well mate like it was it wasn't an easy watch I've got to admit but hey yeah. come on with the three points so happy days well, well and the agony of that because in football you have such low scoring that you have a higher level of near misses and those near oh. misses will just absolutely like shred you to death like a, a a death by a thousand paper cuts it's like as you're watching near miss like jordan davis header header and just missed it went across the goal went across goal and each time you're like this could be no it's not it damn it mm-hmm. and so you're yeah. thinking I don't know how you felt, but I'm 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 over here going. Well, here's here's how the day is going to go. It's going to be yeah, no, yeah. That was exactly it. We were yeah. all turning to each other. It's just one of those the same to each other. It's one of those days, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. nice. It's a nice feeling being in that stand just behind the goal when a ball go last minute goal goes in because it's just it just erupts, mate. You saw yeah. it the next game. You know what it's you yeah. know what it's like. It's just there's there's nothing like being in that stand, mate. Oh, it's it's. Oh, I know. I gotta give. I gotta get back out this season. You're, you um, have if you can yeah the the drug addict inside of me needs to get my fix i have to get my fix um i was i was trying so hard but it just um it's it's not going to line up it won't work out uh with work and everything that mm. i was trying to get to knots uh game so that i could watch it again when uh we yeah. face them in november but uh i i've let it go you know i'm i'm being the bigger person i'm moving on and i'm like okay well i'll, I'll try to get in at least before the end of the season make it back out uh cuz there's that the the atmosphere the crowd the moments there's a special magic about it which i mean obviously when we win it's super magic but still just being there being with the people and being part of that is absolutely amazing. And and you, you dirty son of a, you you got season tickets. You get to be there all the time. You, you take you you do take it for granted. To be fair, and I, I think it's these last two years has really been highlighted. Like obviously, it'd be great if if you overseas fans could come come every week. But like just family members and mates who who used to they might not have even gone to every game in the past, but they would just sort of come when they feel like it. And now they've got no chance for getting a ticket. And you're like kind of like. Yeah, it's it's nice to be able to say I'm going and I feel lucky, really. It's not luck, is it? Because I I paid me money for it, but it still does feel a little bit like there's that element of of um just that that little bit of foresight that I had to get a ticket. It, it kind of was lucky because you know any other day of the week I might have just gone ah nah stuff it I won't bother yeah I don't I don't need to I'll be all right <laughs> yeah but but yeah luckily you had the presence of mind and you were a big enough supporter already that you're like I want to be there. I want to get mm. season tickets. And so, yeah, I mean, you you locked it in. Um, so everybody that lives in Wrexham that is watching this and didn't get season tickets, um, DM Bill. <laughs> you get a shop, no, but you can you can try your luck if you want. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I I'm not gonna be there to watch them anyway, so I don't have anything to lose by throwing you under the bus. Well, you know, Ran, when you come over, maybe if you send me a DM, you'll get a nice no rather than a f- <laughs> off. <laughs> I'll take either though. <laughs> Either's warranted. It'll be fine. Um, well, okay. So a great weekend. Um, and now we're looking to the next weekend. We we uh, had 
Mark on before, and we covered uh, Bradford City, but there were a couple of things that me and you like to cover that uh, Mm. we didn't cover with Mark. Uh, I was an infant at the beginning of the season. Uh, I didn't know exactly which direction. I still don't know exactly which direction to go (laughs) with things, but I'm at least learning some habits along the way. And we know now that I enjoy some things like good old Crest and Badge. Um, I enjoy dirt, finding dirt and, um, (laughs) you know, (laughs) the paparazzi hounding celebrities. I, I just enjoy uh the reality television side of of the sport there's and luckily you all over there do so so good on digging up dirt and then posting it for the rest of us to see um i'm not saying i i actually don't have any extra dirt for bradford city like i don't i don't have anything extra but uh for those of you that are tuning in that haven't seen one of these before. We like to look at the team that we are facing on Saturday. We like to find interesting facts and uh, some little known facts or interesting things that the club has been involved with or the players or staff have been involved with um, and share those with you. Uh, Bill is the resident expert. He has had his double doctorate in Wrexham. And so we are we are leaning on on broad shoulders of strength within the I, Wrexham. I'll I'll take exception to that. Ex- I, I do I do feel a bit of a fraud sometimes being called an expert when you've got the likes of Mark Griffiths and Peter yeah. Jones who exist in the world. You know these these people who are the, his, the club historians. I I kind of I feel like this is my role on Dragonheart as well. I'm kind of like the man in the stand sort of thing. I might I've got an okay you know an okay retention factor for for stupid things about football. I'm not like, I'm not that next level. I can't tell you who scored on a windy Tuesday in 1956, you know, and yeah, Tommy yeah. Bamford scored a hat trick or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know those kind yeah. of things, but I can, I can remember which fans are bastards and which aren't. So, uh, but, yeah, and, <laughs> but you, you are an expert in burgers to the face yeah. uh, of, yeah. of horrible <laughs> phrases being spoken in front of you. Uh, that that you get to shut down. Um, also, just like great memories of the man in the stand, because obviously Mark is watching the games from behind uh, the commentator booth, and so he gets atmosphere around there. But he's also involved in the game where you get to see more of the crowd and what's going on, mm. where the chants are starting from, and maybe I don't know if you've ever done it, but start a chant yourself. Uh, is it, have you? Have you ever done that before? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. It's, it's All right. easier in it's e- easier in an away game because there's less people to get going. It's it's, ha- it's harder. I am not sure where I've ever got got one going at home, but I definitely have a way. Um, Do you have a go-to uh like chant song that you um, you're like if I'm going to start one, here's what I start. No, you you kind of got you kind of got to feel it out round. It's whatever whatever's whatever's Ooh. sort of popular at the time. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like whatever gets people going. <laughs> exactly. You're the freestyle rapper of chants. <laughs> like <laughs> when, whenever whatever well, you're feeling at that moment, you're just, you know, you're uh <laughs> Eminem in 8 Mile. You you only you only oh, have I'm one more shot. Like 20 25 cents instead of 50 cents. Do you know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys have it over there, but you're the dollar store version. Yeah, of, <laughs> yeah we yeah. we probably say pa- well Poundland or or, uh, or Aldi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, we got Aldi out here. I I actually uh, went there on Sunday night. Um, oh yeah, to pick I love up some a bit stuff. of Aldi, mate. Yeah, hence yeah, hence, yeah. Me be, hence me being the Aldi fifty cent. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, I do like that. The Aldi dime or the Aldi nickel or the <laughs> Aldi 25 cents, whatever, whatever. I, I don't know if you guys say dime or nickel over there, but um, no. yeah. I've heard, you, I've heard you guys say it on TV. <laughs> I don't know where the names dime or nickel come from. Somebody will tell me. But um, let's let's jump into a little bit of where names come from. King of Segways over here. Um, so Bradford City, uh, the name is an old English name. Bradford derives from the words Brad or Broad meaning broad and ford meaning ford <laughs> I'm literally reading this and it cleared nothing up for me uh accumulating at the definitions broad ford or wide river crossing so broad as in wide and then yeah. ford as in oh, like a no fjord river. yeah yeah like yeah. a like a like a nordic name so that would be another yeah. norse because like i believe in norwegian uh fjord yeah, F J O R D um, means either water or riverway. Uh, so, and there, there was a lot of there was a lot of um, Viking influence in Yorkshire as well. We did talk about it with Doncaster, didn't we? But it's still yeah. it's all that region of of England was 
you know, heavily influenced by that sort of Viking invasion in the 10th century or when I don't know the exact century, but it was around yeah. that sort of time. Yeah. Yeah. At, at between um, not humans existing and today, uh, Vikings were in, <laughs> in yeah, the course, UK yeah. <laughs> at, at some point in time. Um, so so I don't know what the river is. There's a big, there's a wide river uh, around Bradford. Or I've in? never been to Bradford. I've been to Leeds, okay. which is very close to Bradford, but I've never actually been to Bradford. So I don't know. It's not a, we, we've actually, to, to segue again slightly, we've not really been in, since I've been following football, we've not really been in the league that often with them. So mm. obviously, obviously we are now, but last time we played them in the league was 2000. 2008, the 2007 2008 season, which we got relegated. Mm. Prior to that, it was 2004. Prior to that, we played them in the League Cup in 2002. And then before that, it was like the 90s. So there's there's big gaps there of us not really having played them much. They've mm. also got a bit of a, they've got a reputation for being a huge club, but actually post World War II, they've only ever really been a League One or League Two club, except for a, a couple of periods of being in the Championship and, um, League One. I just think because Bradford's such a big city, they have a, a twenty five thousand seat of ground, and they fill yeah. a lot out. And they it's it's more like a a team that have huge potential rather than a team that have ever actually properly fulfilled that potential. Um, they they're kind of overshadowed by Leeds. Who for those who haven't got don't know much about Yorkshire geography, it is like it's they are right next to each other. It's not quite like a Salford Manchester thing like we were talking about last week. They are quite distinctly mm. their own places, but they are right next door to each other as well. So Leeds have obviously got a huge football club, but both cities have got rugby league clubs and other quite distinct sports in that area. So I don't know maybe whether Bradford's more of a more of a cricket area or or more of a rugby league area I'm not sure but they yeah they've they've got that sort of quite a big ground big following they're one of the bigger teams in the league in terms of stature um and I think they feel like they should be at least be in League One, which ki- ki- kind of makes them an interesting prospect in a way, Ram, because they're like how we used to feel in the National League, where we shouldn't shouldn't be. They were too big for the National League. You know, we're one of the biggest clubs. Mm. We shouldn't be uh, even pre takeover. There was that tiny bit of arrogance about we're too good for this league. I think Bradford is sort of seen as like how pre takeover, how we were seen. Like, oh uh, yeah, they're a bit arrogant. They think they're too they're too good for us. I think a lot of teams in a lot of fan bases in League Two feel that about Bradford, where they bang on about how many fans they take everywhere and how big their ground is. But ultimately, that you know, they're in the league on sport and merit, which they, they don't have much of, unfortunately. So I quite like them as a club, actually. They're, they're a pretty cool club. The colours are quite distinct, aren't they? And they've, they've got a lot of history, but there's it's... Um, it's funny how fans perceive their own club and then how fans of another of other teams perceive mm. a club. It's it's quite distinct, isn't it? There's a lot of like there's a huge disconnect between how how teams view themselves, isn't there really? Yeah, it is so interesting because I was listening to um League Two podcasts. They do like the the weekend review with all of the games. And when they got to Wrexham, they were like Elliot Lee is amazing. He's an incredible footballer. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on board with you guys. Yes. And then they're like, well, the trouble or the problem with Wrexham is that their fans and players are arrogant. That they, they thought they were just going to walk through League Two. They were going to get automatic promotion. And I was like, I don't know about the players and maybe some of the fans, but the only player I ever heard say anything was Ollie Palmer. He's the only one that was like on that podcast. And he's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, we're going to, we're going to win automatic promotion. We're going to be first. We're going to be. And it's like, he's the only one that I heard say that. And I, so it's like, I, I, I sort of think, mate, you know, like you, you don't want your players not thinking like that. I, I don't. All right. Granted, you know, if you're say a, a dork in, in, in the national league, who've come up, you know, run, run away through the league and they're finally hitting a bit of a ceiling. Maybe if their players are saying, yeah, we're going to win the league, that's a bit delusional. But if yeah. you're a team that, that, you know, quite clearly have the resources to push towards the top, I'd want my players to be saying we're going to win the league. And granted, well, maybe the fans don't need to be that arrogant, but it's just, no, you want, you want your players to have a competitive edge. What's the, you know, you don't you don't want your sta- one of your star strikers turning around and going, oh, we might go up, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, I think, no, I no, think there's the, the, um, the, the coached answer where you know how players, as they get bigger, they get uh, representation, they get agents, and then you have people who are like, you, you get um, interviewing training where they do mock interviews yeah, yeah. and they talk to them and they say, here's the responses. And they hit those those lines of, you know, first and foremost, when they're like, you are outstanding. What do you attribute 
your outstanding game today. And I, well, it's a team effort. It's like, you always resort back to the team. You're like, it's a team effort. We all had our part into it. Uh, I was able to do this today, but that's because so-and-so fed me the ball. And that's because so-and-so had this position set up. And so you, you're coach to give those answers, like mm. very vanilla answers. And a lot of the time, like all the coached answers are just not to be controversial, you know, like don't ruffle anybody's feathers. So if you do say something like, yeah, I think, I think we're going to win the league. Like, I think we're going to be promoted. Um, then everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like we're used to eating vanilla and you just <laughs> threw some like fudge on top, sprinkled some, some nuts, uh, put a cherry on it. Like, what is it? What are you doing? Like our, our dietary systems are not ready to digest this. And so yeah. I think I'm, I'm with you that like, yeah, a hundred percent. You want that winning and that killer instinct from your players. And then the dichotomy is the the interviewers kind of have a, a tradition of how you're supposed to answer interview questions. And mm -hmm. if you deviate from that, now you're a character or something. And it's like if they're basing it off of just Ollie Palmer saying that in one interview, but then lumping everybody together as part of that, it's like, OK, you guys are the problem. You're the problem if that's what you're basing everything off of. And it's like, do you think the yeah. team is just Ollie Palmer or just one player? Like, then you're the problem. Yeah. And, and I've got to say as well, Ran, and I'm, I'm not just saying this to sort of defend Wrexham fans. Pretty much everyone that I've spoken to who who are, whether they're regular match goers or they, they sort of watch on streams or whatever, a lot of people have just been said they'd be happy for us to stay up this year. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think everyone is saying we... I think for starters, nobody's saying we need to go up. I think a lot of people saying we we might go up. I've said myself, I think we might get. Um, you know, I think we're going to finish in a playoff spot, maybe sneak or my promotion. Um, I got a bit carried away on the last Dragon Art when I was when I was feeling really ill, and I was like, "Yeah, that's a championship winning performance." That when, when we drew with Mansfield, I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's 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 for you know." You can get carried away and stuff, but I I don't know I. I I don't think we're arrogant, but then again, like like that whole like saying about the your own perception versus what everyone else perceives you as, maybe maybe even thinking that you're not arrogant is kind of arrogant. I don't know. I, <laughs> but no, I don't think you're wrong. Like obviously, I'm biased in my opinion. Um, but I like to think that I'm a fairly objective person. You know, when I see a foul, I don't have the rose tinted glasses on all the time, and then I'm like, nah, we definitely fouled that person. Like when everybody's calling mm. for a non-fell, nah, we definitely did. And then it's like you watch the replay and you're like, yeah, we did. We did do it. <laughs> and so I'd like to think that I'm fairly objective or at least I try to be. And in this situation, the only thing I can like really count it to is that Wrexham is a team on the move. It's a team that is going forward and League Two isn't the stopping point. There's momentum behind us. There's passion. Uh, there's huge support. And you have support from the fans and you have support from the owners. And there's a collective group of people that are pushing something forward. And not every club has that. Not mm. every club has the amount of support that Wrexham does. And so I could I can understand some jealousy and when you're looking at another team and you say, like, why do they deserve that? Why do they deserve to have the owners do it? And why do they deserve to have international fans becoming diehards and supporting them? Uh, why do they like Wrexham's know better than we are? And in fact, mm. I'm going to look and be critical and put everything under a microscope and anything that can be perceived negatively. And, and you got to think the lack of controversies that Wrexham has right now, that what they can complain about is, I think you're arrogant. <laughs> well, that means we're not messing up on a lot of fronts. If mm. the worst you can say about us is that I, they're arrogant. And it's like, okay, so something you can't prove and uh, you have no evidence to point to that is an opinion and uh, everybody's entitled to it. So it's not fact. Uh, okay, well, if that's as best <laughs> as you can do, that means we're we're doing pretty well. Uh, we are not giving the haters a lot of hater juice to drink. So no, we're not. I think, I think we're doing I, good. I think we are doing all right. Yeah, it's it's um these the the, the perceptions change, and I, I think a lot of it is is um I was a bit disappointed reading a, 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 an article by the by the journalist called Barney Rone from the Guardian, who okay. generally when I've read his read his stuff or listened to him on podcasts, he seems fairly reasonable, but he did a bit of a clickbaity article about Wrexham. Mm. There was a few things in there that were a bit sort of backhanded compliments. There was a few things that were very like, oh, I'm a London journalist coming to 
to this backwater place. Look, oh, there's the, the there was very much like a oh, there was rumors that David Beckham was showing up. Like, no, no, no one I heard speaking about the Salford game was saying David Beckham was going to be there. Everyone was saying, I wonder if David Beckham will be there because we've had crazier things than that happen. Yeah. Do, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? We've I've been bought by Robin Ryan, so it's not completely unreasonable to think Beckham might show up. Like, you know, he, he was at Wembley, wasn't he, when we played there? So, but. Nobody, nobody and he has would. connections to uh, LA Galaxy uh, course, with Will yeah. Ferrell, and Will Ferrell has been there. So it's like, yeah, okay, it's, it's exactly, in the realm yeah, of possibility. Yeah. And um, and then he he called the the Salford versus Wrexham game El Plastico, which is a play on play on words for El Clasico, which is the game yeah. between Real Madrid and Barcelona. For people who don't know, which is you know considered probably mm. the biggest club game in world football. Uh, that's, I've heard El Plastico about a few a few teams before now, and I just I don't think we quite deserve that tag. I think Salford probably do. Yeah, well, <laughs> if that's what I'm saying. Like that was probably do, but you know, historically, that was Beckham. Really, Beckham said sorry. that. No, just Beck- this guy on the on the in the Guardian. Oh, okay. just that, I was like, yeah. what the hell is Beckham talking about? No, 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 no. no. Just on. just saying that, like this this Barney Ronan. It was just it was all very backhanded, and it's like it's almost like you know that some of these people got a nerve to call us arrogant, and then then you know then there's articles like that about us, and it's like, uh, who's who's the arrogant one in this situation? Is it the people who are turning their nose up at us and don't actually want to learn anything, or is it the or is it us? I'll, I'll yeah. let you decide that one. You know. Well, and I'm sure like guys like that barney character he just has like a scrabble board of generic terms that are like controversial hot takes and then he scrabbles them up pulls one out and he goes ah yeah el plastico yeah yeah that's going in the article and then just says some stuff just to like get clicks get views and get people to pay attention to him um we're probably contributing to him thinking he did a great job with you know, like make, making great statements. For the record, Barney, you're not watching this. But if you are watching this, um, you are a shower uh, for a private parts. <laughs> can I can I say that? Can I say? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can say that. I won't. <laughs> no, it's it's a funny one. You know the the the, the thing that Wrexham fans have got to get used to, myself included, is that a lot of content about Wrexham is no longer being made for Wrexham fans. It's being made for other people to click on. You know mm. what I mean? Like. Even the documentary is not really, it's not really made for me. It's made for yeah you guys. Like I still yeah. enjoy it because it's about my town and everything, but it's made for people who don't know about Wrexham. But that extends to the media now as well, doesn't it? Where literally all of it is just to drive traffic. All these websites and all these 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 media outlets have done the they're not the people who run these places, they're not stupid. They've done they've done the research and they know Wrexham Wrexham drives clicks, whether it's positive yeah. or negative. They, we drive clicks and that's why it keeps coming up. And any anybody who wants to keep complaining about the media coverage that Wrexham gets, stop stop interacting yeah. with it. Stop retweeting it. Stop stop reading the articles and then it'll go away. But please don't because we we live off all this publicity. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep Continue the clicks. <laughs> we could we could possibly do with signing uh, Arthur Oconquo on on a on a permanent deal come the end of the season. Ooh. So keep clicking those websites and get us yes. some engagement, <laughs> dude. How good is he? He's a wow. real mate. Wow! Don't forget the don't forget the best of games at the weekend. Um, no, but it, but he saved it. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. He's he, he's a young lad, mate, as well. You know, you you you've got to allow a keep a keeper, especially you know, a couple of mistakes. Aaron James played really well as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. we, we kind of got distracted from Bradford, didn't we? No, <laughs> no, no. We are in our wheelhouse, which is um, we will gladly wax poetically. If- about Wrexham, any opportunity that we get. And we're, it's not wrong. That's exactly what we should be doing because it's coming from the heart. Um, mm. But speaking of things that might not come from the heart, so Bradford City, um, they're <laughs> standing 11th on the table. They have, they won their last game, lost the subsequent two, and then won the two previous. So their last five, win-win, loss-loss, win. Um, so some relative uh, success with mixed it's about 50 50 bag um we're coming off on uh win win draw draw loss and so momentum seems to point greater to how we've been performing Mm -hmm. um and we did face bradford um at the beginning at the uh, league cup yes Um, and so we have seen them before so and we have some extra players that we didn't have we have mullen we have Mm -hmm. uh fletcher do they They've also switched managers since then, though, and I don't know how they're playing since they switched managers. Well, their their new manager is a is a 
is a player manager. I think. I think he's only caretaker he manager at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a player think, manager. They said they, uh, only, they only signed him this summer, so he's come from Exeter City this summer, and then he's gone straight in to be. He's thirty four. He's gone straight in to be the the player manager, Kevin McDonald. So fair play to him. That's just you know it's a tough ask, isn't it? Even if it is as a caretaker, just to so caretaker for anyone listening who doesn't know the if if there's an it's an interim manager. So the manager, whilst they're looking for another manager, will be called the caretaker over here. I don't know whether it's the same mm, in, no, a, in no. the US, but. So he'll only be in charge until they hire someone permanently, whether that'll be him or, or someone else, I don't know. Their, pre- their previous manager was Mark Hughes. You probably went over that with Mark Griffiths, yeah. but Mark Hughes is yeah. and player. So it's a bit it's a bit of a shame, really, that he's not going to be there for the, the league game. Um, there's going to be a cracker, mate. They've, they've, they've pretty much sold out. I think they've sold 20,000. The stadium yeah. is 25, and they'll be given... I can't remember how many they've given us, but it'll be somewhere between three and 4,000, I'd imagine, for the away end, which is sold out. No shock. Um yeah, no, it's 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 funny how they all turn up for Wrexham, isn't it? They, the yeah. whole where, where were you when you were shit yeah. chant that comes on? Yeah, we didn't used to sell out grounds when we went away either, so it works. But it works both ways, lads. Come on, well, Damn, in, in Brett, like, you're going to be the first one to get a, re- a ticket for the Wrexham game. Yeah, yeah, they're like, ah, oh, I, I would never watch Wrexham. Oh, the tickets are on sale. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I need to go so that I can tell them what I think about them. Uh, but five minutes ago. You were like, F or I'm never going to watch them, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like to watch them eat humble pie if I can. I'm not saying that it's going to be like a blowout game uh, from Wrexham, but okay. If uh, if we do, I'll enjoy it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have that term. Uh, there's humble pie, like eating some humble pie, and then there's yeah, eating yeah. crow. Do you guys have eating oh, crow? No, no. Okay, same, same, same type of sentiment that it's uh, like getting served. You know, some humility. Um, yeah. And everybody's trying to serve us crow. Everybody is out there each time they're facing us. Every fan is just hoping that they are the ones to blow Wrexham out of the water. Um, we're the ball of the ball. Everybody wants a piece of us. And that's fine. I like we're the Taylor Swift of League Two. Um, everybody's interested into what we're doing, who we're dating, who we're talking to, uh, who we were seen walking out of a bar or club with. Um, that's us. And you know what? I'm sorry that we have to shake it off. Yeah. Like, uh, like <laughs> I was going to try to do like two or three song references. And I realized that's the only name I know. <laughs> and it yeah, fell I apart. Know. I think that's the only name with one of his songs I know as well. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was it. I was, I was going to try to do like a back to back, write out the names, um, insert other Taylor Swift songs, yeah. et cetera. Well, uh, moving but, but, swiftly on, Ran. Hey. Oh, yes, yes, oh. yes. Um, <laughs> so, so they're sitting at 11th. Um, obviously, the point differential is so small at this time. Um, was it this way? I, I I wasn't tracking what the point differential was. I, I, at the like first 10 games, 12 games, et cetera, I wasn't looking at it until later on, um, when we had a considerable gap between us knots and the rest of the league. Um, is this typical? To yeah. Have- let, let me, let me just have a quick look. So league two. How much does does Stockport are top with twenty six, and you can go all the way down to fifteenth, which is Salford, who are on sixteen points. You know, there's ten points between fifteenth and top, but we are only quarter, just over a quarter of the way through the season, so that gap's going to get bigger eventually, isn't it? Um, it is interesting that from like you say, from Bradford up to Stockport is seven points now. You know, to look at it another way, Bradford beats Stockport, and that that closes that gap quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then. I don't know if they have already played, but just talking hypothetically, and then Stockport only need to lose two more games for Bradford to close that gap on them. So it's not really like it's it's quite early on in the season, isn't it? Um, yeah. I, I, honestly, I personally don't ever really look at the table until November, end of November, maybe the beginning okay. of December. It's That's... it's just it's not really worth it. You can sort of get an idea now. You now you're starting to sort of see the teams that are going to form the bottom of the pack and the top of the. Mm. generally, but it only takes, let's say, I'm just using Notts County because people might know Notts County, let's say some League One or Championship club give Luke Williams an offer to leave Notts County as their manager. Let's say it's a team like, I don't know, like Sheffield Wednesday who who have got 
a lot of money. You know, they're in the championship. They've they've changed managers a few times, and he's got potentially potential there to go and work at a championship club. That can really alter their the rest of their season. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen with Knotts. I'm just using that as an example. But yeah, things can change very quickly in football, and it's only really once there's a big bank of points come sort of the end of January really that you really properly know right these are the teams that are in the hunt these are the teams that are looking to not go down you may then have a couple of teams sort of in between that could you know if they go on a mad run they could do it but it's not likely and um you honestly can't see that form this this early. It, it's it's not that it's we're at the we're past the point where looking at the tables irrelevant because if you've got a lot of losses, if you're someone like Don a team like Doncaster, you've got a lot of ground to make up now. So it's not mm. irrelevant, but it's also like for those teams anywhere between first and tenth, don't don't worry about it for another month or two. I'd say yeah, okay, I mean, yeah. Somebody, if you if you're Sutton yeah. United and you have seven points, um, you should be worrying right now right cause... yeah so that's yeah those are the kind of teams that should be wor- they should definitely be worrying yeah um i think it's more at this stage of the season it's more pertinent for the teams that are at the bottom than it is at the top like if you're near the top it's not as big of a deal but yeah, you know, you're yeah. looking at looking at league one you've got cheltenham that have got two points so they're going to be looking at that and thinking yeah yeah uh, Wigan have got five, Reading six, Fleetwood eight, Carlisle eleven in League One. So yeah, there's you, there's already a sort of a bit of a gap at the bottom starting to develop there. Um, so there's ten points between first and ninth in League One. So yeah, maybe, maybe the to be fair, maybe the League Two table is a little bit um how close it is 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 a little bit unusual. I think in fairness, but gaps will start. You know, as te- teams start to have injuries and suspensions and a manager yeah. leaves or, or or a player leaves. In January that I think that's why I don't really focus properly until January because you could have a team that don't have much money but they've had a player break through and then someone from a higher league comes and pips them for the Ooh. for the person you know a lot of people in last January wanted um Macaulay Langstaff to disappear didn't, didn't they because yeah yeah you know there was there was a good chance that someone from the championship or somewhere would have would have come and taken him now just looking at the you've got me you've got me interested now Ran in the championship there's 10 points between Leicester who are top and Preston who are third. Now that that's unusual wow. for to be such a gap between top and, and second this early on. Not second, sorry, third. Team in second have got 28 points. So yeah, maybe it was a little bit unfair. Maybe maybe it is unusually close. Wow. But I wouldn't that, know because I don't pay attention to the table until, <laughs> until the end of November. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for, for me, just like looking at it, I'm like, what? You, you've got Bradford in 11th place and they're only seven points off of the top. It's like, that could be a couple of weekends and you're, and you're you're up that could there that's not a big spread but then again i didn't know if that's typical uh or typical for league 2 cuz it seems like the dynamics of each league like have their own type of ecosystem that kind of works differently where you know in here it's like almost anybody could win a game like anybody faced against anybody could win a game but when we were in the national league you're like pretty sure there's going to be wins and like you can mm. put money on it and feel that you're not making a risky bet where here it's like you grab anybody from yeah that what 15 or something from like salford or i i i'm excluding mk dons um <laughs> but from from like salford up you're like yeah anybody could win a game Anybody could have a good game, put it together. But there are some that are becoming more threatening. Stockport, where they won their last five and um, their defense is incredible. And yeah, their their goals against are 14. But then Mansfield's defense is even better. Goals against 10. Mm. And they're like, okay, all right. Well, uh, those are ones where we'll be facing Mansfield. There's definitely a picture forming there, isn't there? It, it's yeah. just, yeah. It's So Le- League Two is funny compared to the National League. So the, the they're, they're almost like reverse images of each other because in, in the National League, four come up, two from the north, two from the south. The, the, the gap between the two, the four teams that come up and the top half of the National League is huge, massive because you're talking about teams that are semi-pro or amateur sometimes, not always, but sometimes coming up and then having to quickly become as close to professional as you can get. Mm. And there's that 
bottleneck of only two that go up. So in any given year in the National League, the top eight could be strong. But because only two go up, the next year the top eight is still going to be strong because most of those teams have stayed down. Then in the in League Two, the bottom half of the table, by the end of the year, or even if it's just the bottom quarter rather than the bottom half, there's going to be a lot of stinky teams. Like, you know, teams that are just, mm. just they're not being punished for being bad because only two teams go down. Yeah. So you, you'll, you'll quite often have the, the team who finish third from bottom will the next year either get relegated or will finish third or fourth from bottom again. And they'll just keep getting away with it just about until they finally crumble and go down. Or they just have that period of a couple of years where they were shit and they managed to build it up again. The year Wrexham got relegated, we all we had to save ourselves. The Sorry, the year before Wrexham got relegated, we survived by the skin of our teeth on the last day of the season. And the year before that, we finished like 13th or something. So, you know, we were cra- we were crap for a couple of years before we actually went down. It wasn't just like it was like a sudden, oh, we're, we're crap now, oh, we're gone. Um, so, and then on to the flip side of that, because so many teams go up from League 2 to League 1, it's probably fair to say the bottom half of League 1 is quite similar to the, the top six or seven in League 2. Mm. So those teams that come down will quite often, some of those teams that come down will quite often go back up because they've just they've just got that quality. And when they did get relegated, it was because they were one of four unlucky teams to, that went down because it's just like there's a lot of teams, isn't it, to to go in a season. So it, it's, easy, it's easy to get promoted out of this league, but I think it does mean that there's a lot of teams that are actually quite, Good. Yeah. Well, and, and so just to clarify, two go down from League Two, two come yeah. up from National League, and yeah. then four go up to League yes. One, and three, then four three come automatic down. automatic and one playoff. Okay. Okay. And then four come down from League One. I don't know why it's not standardized, because then from League One to the Championship, it's three up to the Championship and three down. <laughs> and then the Premier There's... League is three up, three down, I think, as well. Yeah, I think so. I'd have to double check that actually. So so what it is is they're like We love punish... doing things awkwardly in Britain, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's just punish like... the National League, right? You're like, hey, look, the league is an exclusive club. We're not gonna just let anybody in here. So only two of you bastards is coming in. And but <laughs> they have to make up that average difference by four up, four down, so that it equals out to an average of three up three down just make it three up three down in every league yeah they, sh- they should i mean there was there was talk years ago again way before the takeover like i'm talking like 2016 2017 where they were talking about integrating i don't, can't remember the exact number but it would have been integrating eight of the teams from the national league into a league three and having each league premier league so it's premier league's 20 teams championships 24 league and then every other league down from the Premier League is 24 teams but they'd standardise it so it was 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 but include another league which took some from the National League so they, they were creating it. Does that make sense? So They had an in-betweener? Like, yeah, it would, it'd just be like, yeah, because, you know, there's a lot of teams like us and at the time, Grimsby, Luton, all these other big teams were in there that probably deserved to be in a league, in League 2 and with the way the fact that it would be like a way of reducing the amount of games that were played during a season because instead of playing 23 other teams, you would only play nine Nineteen over team or nineteen, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, in in theory, it's a good idea, but then I suppose you're really weakening the national league after that, aren't you? So where where does that go as a as a division? And there's a lot of there's yeah. a lot of really archaic stuff in football, isn't there? Old school British stiff upper lip mentality where it's like it doesn't really make sense, but we're plodding on because we've decided it now, and that's that. <laughs> I, I've noticed that a lot of like that's what we've always done. And so it's like, well, this is how it's always been. So keep doing it. It's like, well, I mean, it's okay to change. It's all right. Um, Not everybody in the world needs to speak English. Uh, Sorry. Uh, So obviously um, this is going to be a tough one. It's going to be, be a good battle against Bradford. We went one, one in that cup game and it went to penalties. Um, So Obviously, the teams are are different. They're not exactly the same. I would be leaning into we're more on the hot foot and that mm. we have more momentum going for us. So I'm I'm expecting and hoping I'm hopefully expecting uh, a win. Uh, but but how are you? How do you feel? I don't really know. I'm I'm I'm, str- I'm struggling to sort of pick this one out, round to be honest. Because every time I feel like we're about to go on a run, we have hit a bit of a stumbling block in some way or another. But I think you are right. The form the form and the momentum's with us. It all depends what that what the Bradford crowd how that Bradford crowd impacts our players. Mm. I think well, you know, as as you can see in the background, like the the Sheffield United and the the Coventry games didn't really phase our players. So I think they've got the mentality for it. It just depends how much of an impact positively or negatively 
effectively the Bradford crowd has on the Bradford players. So they've sold out. Is the atmosphere going to be good? Actually, sometimes when a team sells out and they're not used to selling out, that's because a lot of people don't usually go go in and it waters the atmosphere down. So it could be a negative. It could put some extra, you know, on the other side of it, they could put some extra pressure on the Bradford players. Like, oh, yeah. You know, we're, we're suddenly playing, in, instead of playing in front of 16,000, we're playing in front of 25,000 or whatever. So I think that'll play a big part in it. Um, I think I cautiously lean towards us, but I really, I really can't. Like, I, I can't. I really couldn't call it this time. Yeah, would it? Uh, you're not going to bet money on it. Uh, you're not going to put no, money. I, I never, never, never put money yeah. on my own team, mate. It takes the fun out of it. <laughs> it's stressful yeah. enough supporting Wrexham as it is. I don't need to have money riding on it as well. <laughs> so it's anybody's game, but we have just a. A, a slight advantage uh going into it and so i think we have and I, I forgot to look it up i think we have like four players that are on four yellow cards at the moment mm-hmm. um and i don't know what the cycle is do when they stay on four re- uh yellow cards and waiting for that that fifth to get suspended is there a certain calendar date numbers where some of them drop off or is it a per game basis? Um, there is a date and I can't remember when it is off the top of my head. I think it's either just before the transfer window or just after the transfer window in January closes. But I, I can't remember exactly, but there is a date where you, you, your yellow cards get, they don't get wiped out, but you don't get suspended. So Oh, the, the number you, goes up to like from five yeah, to, yeah, to 10. Eight, it is a 10, so, 10. so they go five is a one man match ban. 10 is a two match ban, 15 is a three match ban, and it just keeps going like mm. like that. So it's obviously to stop players from just playing an entire season and just getting one match bans here and there. But it, I'd have to research it, but I think, say you got four in the period before the cutoff and then it gets wiped, or it doesn't get wiped, but the, you know, the, the boundary moves. If you do reach 10, so you get six yellow cards in the next set of games, I think you do still get the two match bans. So the amount of ban doesn't mm. change for the, the, the amount you just stop getting one for five yellow cards at that point but i could i could be wrong i'm not 100 percent certain but i think that's how it works okay okay it's not a progressive scale of uh punishment it's if you get 10 it's two no matter what is yeah, i think so okay I, i'm ha- happy to be corrected on that but i think that's how it works it's yeah. also if you get, if you get one red card in the season you get three but if you get a second red card later in the season it's four. Oh, I think anyway, again, there might be a cutoff point for that as well, but then, and then it's five and then it's because obviously you just, there will be some Jeez. players that say if you're on the bench and you're going to be on the bench for the rest of the season, your manager might just go, go on, just go and just go and take his legs out and get your yeah. red card. And then <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll use you again, Frank the tank on the bench or ever <laughs> just there to literally just to break legs. <laughs> and then they'll, uh, they'll start squaring them, then cubing them. They're like, all right, well, you had five cube, uh, which I don't know what that is, 125, maybe? I don't know. But um, if it is, awesome. Uh, but I, I I need to look up. Give me one second. Let me look up um, yellow car. Yeah. See, because I, I think there's a good amount of people that are on. Um, I think there's like four people that are on yellow cards. So let's see. Okay, so there is Elliot Lee with four. Uh, Owen O'Connell at four ollie palmer at three uh tom o'connor at three will boyle at three and james mclean at three so o'connell and lee have four sitting on it and then we have you know what is that four more people four more people with three so maybe we just take the sacrifice and then next month we have one game where everybody just gets their cards out that, in was one the, game. that was the crew game, wasn't it? That's was, that was when everyone got their yellow cards last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That crew game. I think I think it was seven cards that uh, went Crazy. down in that game. Um, so is obviously we went from being incredibly disciplined to League Two, where the standard of gameplay has changed. Uh, what we the calls in National League get called that weren't called. It's different. Um, mm. Is this a concern that we? like need to put a put a damper on already or is it something where it's this is just part and parcel of playing and it's going to happen it's it's a concern if we're still talking about it in a month Mm, okay 
I think at the moment it's just teething problems with with players getting used to be the players in the system getting used to the league, and you you can't account for mad games like the crew game where the where the refs just brandishing yellow cards left, right, and centre like that was just that was unlike anything I've ever seen. So you know that that that's that's kind of a crazy one. But I think if we haven't learned in the next month or so, then you do need to start. You know, come on, we we need to we need to be a bit more discipline be a bit more careful but i think you're right like part of the problem with why some of the national league ref are considered so bad is because they let mad tackles go you know on both sides you know wrexham have been the mm. ones dishing them out before now they let the, those kind of tackles go and they don't book players and you think well if you'd have just booked him at the start of the game the rest of the game the, whichever team it was would have been a bit more in line because they've gone oh yeah this ref's going to book us today yeah so maybe yeah. maybe that plays into it a little bit but they're too they, you know like the league two refs go too far the other way and they're dishing too many yellow cards out rather than <laughs> than the right balance yeah, they they have them at the ready, like in in League Two. You yeah. know, they're just sitting there, one hand on the holster, and they're just like, "Are you? Are you? Yeah, yeah, you are." <laughs> Talk. Wait, look at me in the eye again. Watch what happens. All that, all those cards for like talking back. Uh, which it's well, like that's, I say I say the month thing that's something that could be stamped out now to be fair because it's not something we did a lot of last year and I think you know you, it's a it's a silly booking if you're getting booked for mouthing off at the referee and just, just don't do it in it you know <laughs> yeah well I mean do you need a captain like Luke Young uh, on the field to be talking to the ref and you know we have Mullen as a cat as a captain who hasn't been the captain very often for Wrexham. Is it a role thing where Mullen needs more experience as the captain because he gets fired up as much as everyone else? It's a good question. I, it's it's not something I feel qualified enough to speak about because you know I'm not, I'm not on the pitch. I don't know what Mullin's saying to the players. He could be saying to to people, you know, all right, calm down now, and it's not coming across, or it may it. I don't. Um, my answer on that one is not sure, but it's a good question. It'd be something that if you ever got to speak to one of the players or Phil Parkinson, that you could get a good yeah. answer out of them. <laughs> um, what I imagine is, you know, somebody Elliot Lee is like, "Did you see that fucking tackle?" And then Mullen's like, "It was fucking horrible." And then he's like, just <laughs> as amped up. And then you're yeah, like, "I can see that definitely." <laughs> you're like, "Wait, wait, wait!" Somebody has to calm down. You can't build upon each other and then turn around and like, I'm going to go talk to the ref. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, no. Everybody take a breath, calm down. Well, um, before we get out of here, um, we should look at the crest and badge. I need to make a theme song. I need to do it like <laughs> something cheesy, like crest and badge. Yeah. Ben, you've got uh, it, mate. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm looking over here at the crest. Um, we have the B and the C uh, that has been on the badge for a really long time. It might be from the beginning of them going from Manningham to Bradford City of um, the B and the C being included on the badge. Uh, of course, the colors, the claret uh, and amber, uh, those nice Harry Potter. And then the <laughs> bantams with a uh, looks like a rooster or a yeah, yeah, it's a rooster. Has a little so, whatever this thing is. A, a bantam is uh I don't I suppose you wouldn't know what a bantam is. It's a small chicken. So it's, okay. I don't know I don't know whether they're native to here or they're like a they're like a breed of chicken that say a chicken is that big. They're like they look exactly like a chicken, okay. but they're just a little bit smaller. So we have we have game hens over here, uh commonly called it, um Cornish game it, hens. It could be that that's I don't I don't know enough about ch chickens to be totally honest with you. I just <laughs> mate of mine used his dad used to have a bantam, and that's literally the only reason why I know <laughs> I know that's what where it comes from. <laughs> give me give me two seconds. Let me. Uh, oh, there are bantams. There's the American Bantam Association of Bantam <laughs> Breeders and their interests. Cool, so sure. <laughs> it's not a Cornish game hen. It's a it's a different. Um, would you call it a species? A different? Yeah, I don't know. Is it is species yeah. a breed or I don't, I don't? I don't know. Different breed, different breed. But An animals yeah, I don't know. Not my not my uh, strong I, point, really. <laughs> I know, I know. I I I don't know enough about them. But evidently, yeah. So it's not a Cornish game hen. It is a separate thing. And over here we have them called the um, American bantam. So probably my guess would be at some point in time they were brought over here. And then they, um, you know, reproduced with each other and created a different the set American of DNA yeah. uh, that's still related, but probably branched off and is what I would assume from the vast uh, herbological uh, nature 
that I'm your, your excellent knowledge. Yeah, my excellent knowledge. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 the bantams are the small uh fowl and yes. so what's on top of them although it you know sizing for scale we can't tell that's a small one versus a large chicken because <laughs> it's like what size is a badge we don't know so it seems it seems pretty um pretty straightforward as far the, as their badge goes the only other detail that they have that's worth pointing out is um the black band around the outside of the, the okay. badge is is a uh, remembrance Band for uh, the the Bradford disaster for all the victims mm. of the Bradford disaster. So they, I'm not sure if Mark said it when you lasted an episode on Bradford, but they they um will always have a piece of black on their kit as a remembrance. Mm. Uh, the badge. I mean, if you look at Rexman's badge, there is a black outline, but it's purposely a lot thicker on the Bradford one as as a you know most badges do have a black outline, but it's really like prominent just as a as a, as a tribute. So instead of doing like you know like the Rex Mother 1934 and stuff, that's how they've chosen to remember. And you'll quite often not this year, but quite often the Bradford kit will just have a a really like subtle sort of black trim. So it might be a bit of black on the white okay. shorts, or the the sleeve may just have a bit of black piping or something. But they always try to include something like that on the kits. That's cool. That is that. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice yeah. touch, isn't it? It's a nice detail. That's that's good. I mean, you know, there's that thing of it's like you can't live in the past, but you must respect and know your history to yeah, move definitely. forward. And like paying that tribute uh, to the people, I, I think it was like 1985 and 56 people died yeah. in X amount more injured. And that's horrible. I mean, you think of all the great memories that happen between like you and your family or you and your friends going to matches and all those good times that you have um, for the association to those events be tainted with uh, pain and grief and remorse. Um, all the people that were from there, because 85 wasn't that long ago. No, uh, really wasn't. Yeah, you're, you're going to have still a lot of people around um, that that were there yeah. uh, and at that event. No, no one should ever go to a football match and not come back, should they? You know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. you know I know people die of natural causes, but for, for something like that to happen is, is just absolutely awful, isn't it, mate? And, you know, a lot, a yeah. lot of respect to them as a club for, for keeping a, a strong tradition of, of honouring that because not every club would or does, I don't think. I think it's fair to say. So, yeah, fair play to them. Uh, last, last thing I'm going to hit you with before we jump out of here. Uh, lineups. What, what yes. do we think Wrexham's throwing out there for Saturday? Um, I think I believe we, we can have Barney back, right? Yeah, Barnett's back. So I think we stick we stick with with that formation and play Barnett instead. Um, we might see somebody go come in for O'Connor if we want to go a bit tighter at the back with us playing away from home. Mm. But I think he's been playing quite well on that left left side of the of the three at the back. So I'd be a bit remiss to I think he might be our only natural left sided. I know he plays defensive midfield, but I think he might be our only naturally left footed uh centre back. So actually having wow. that balance in the three is quite important, I think. So I think he stays there unless Tunnicliffe's ready and, and Parkinson wants to give Tunnicliffe a run out. He's been on the bench a couple of times, hasn't he? So maybe it's his time to come into the side, but I, I I don't think you mix it up too much. It all depends on fitness and stuff, really, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. Well, and, you know, each week, Parky's hands are getting tied a little bit more. But yeah, yeah. But I wonder if there's something about him where he's like, you know, I took you to the promised land, Bradford, uh, in my last spell. And he's like, <laughs> I'm I'm here to let you know that you must fly on your own. And I will put you to the knife because um, <laughs> I think it was 2018. Um, they had those those they went to Wembley twice. I think it was yeah. in, in one season um, with Parkinson. And so, I mean, he's probably got a soft spot for him, but he's a he's a professional. I think, mm -hmm. you know, he's going to go for blood. Like if, it, oh, yeah. if there's a chance, he's not going to lay up and he's not going to put it in an easier lineup like he's you know i think i think he enjoys himself at wrexham you know having yeah. so much support from the owners and the higher ups and you know it's so much trust into him hey you know you pick your team you tell us what players you want and it's like you don't get that often in sport never mind just football just sport in general to have that that level of, yeah. of back is unusual isn't it so yeah yeah so that's, so that's, i'm that's, that's a nice conf confident competent win ran that's that yeah that's all i I see. <laughs> well, and, and I'd love if he, you know, knows certain players uh, weaknesses 
And it's like, you, you no, 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 no. You switch the ball, go on the left hand side. They're terrible with a, you know, with a start stop. They can't restart really quickly. So if you're going mm-hmm. at full speed, you stop and then you start up again. And it's like, I would, I know he knows that kind of stuff about um, some of the players are still there from when he uh, mm-hmm. was a manager. And so I would, I would love to see some stuff where uh, it's a fun and exciting game and more comfortable this time and you yeah. know not not me yelling in celebration but part of that celebration was the release of the tension and frustration that was <laughs> sitting inside there bottling up that all got to leave my body in a in a positive good way um i'd rather not have that if we can <laughs> i'd rather just a fun walk in the park and <laughs> enjoying ourselves and everybody like yeah that was a good game that's a good game that was a good, good, good good we put it together it was fun it was good but but yeah, so <clears throat> Saturday, Bradford City. Um, I guess we'll see the lineup coming up. They release them on Thursday or Friday. Mm. Uh, no, we do rec them. No, they, they they're not allowed to release it until two o'clock before the game. Are they? Oh, okay, okay. So, so all the stuff that I see beforehand are speculation. Of- yeah, quite quite often though, like on the Thursday or Friday press conference, Phil Parkinson will say X player is out injured. You know, if it's a definite and they're not trying mm-hmm. to play mind games, like someone like Mendy, who's probably going to be injured for a while, he'll probably say, yeah, Mendy's out. So we'll mm-hmm. get an idea of who's available. But no, they don't. Team sheets don't get announced until two o'clock the, on the day of the game. OK, well, I'll be looking forward to it. Um, are, are you traveling out? For the game? No, I'm not, unfortunately. But no? um, okay. it's a so, ba- baby's on the way. The pennies are getting put in the penny jar, mate. Yeah. <laughs> not as many away days for me at the moment. <laughs> You're never going to a Bradford game. It's intact. You're still... As we'd say in the U.S., you're batting 1,000. You are still have a perfect record of not going to Bradford games. So congratulations, yes, that, Phil. That, that, that makes me feel really happy. Yeah, I, I also <laughs> hold that, but I hold it for every team because I haven't been to any away games over in the U.K. Yet, but yet. We'll yet, get you to one I know we, that's what I'm going to plan out this season. I want to come out for maybe two weeks so that mm. I can get some away games in and some home games if I can get tickets to mm. any of them. If I mean, if I can't get tickets, it'll still be cool out there watching, you know, from a pub and enjoying myself. But if I can get tickets to like some of those matches, away matches, yeah, yeah. I yeah. definitely will. <laughs> All right, Bill. Well, thank you so much uh, for blessing us with some more of your expert knowledge because you know better than anybody else in the history of else. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for your expertise. Know, and th- thank you for having me on, Ran. You know, I, I, it's... It's always a pleasure doing this and you do such a great job with the editing and everything. So thank you for all the effort and time you put into to putting it all together. It's, it's a pleasure, mate. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. And I was hoping for you to say something that was uh, was horribly inaccurate, but um, I feel like I'm going to own that one. I'm going to go. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> all right, Bill. Well, take it easy. Uh, enjoy your week and everybody out there up the town. Oh, mate. Up the town. <laughs>